Hey, hey, and welcome to episode two of Exploring Explore. Last time we talked about how Explore helps us avoid complex test plans and also avoid the ancient background script interface. Today I'm going to test out a whole business rule without complex test plans and also without committing updates to the business rule and testing with each iteration. Here's the setup. I have a small customization on my project task form for companies that perceive project work within a project as being either OPEX or CAPEX, depending on the project task type. So the project task has an expense type of CAPEX and OPEX, and we want this to drive everything from the resource plans to the expense lines that come in when time is logged against these project tasks. So when time is logged against that project task, I want the resulting expense line to have the most appropriate cost type, and the most appropriate expense type. You'll notice that out of the box, these are always CapEx. In my world, it's gonna be a lot more nuanced. So here's a business rule I've started. On the insert of an expense line, it determines if the expense line is linked to a project task, figures out what the expense type of the project task is, and then makes the expense type of that expense line the same. Now I know there's all kinds of problems with it, but what I'm sick and tired of is the long, arduous test plan I've got to fulfill every single iteration of this business rule that I build. I've also got to go dumpster diving through system logs, and I'm stuck with changing this, this business rule one tiny bit at a time for each iteration. But just how long is one of those iterations? Here's a 10-step process. One, build a test project. Two, build project tasks. Three, ensure... Alternatively, we could stop right there, say, oh, hell no, and use Explore as a laboratory. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a sample expense line and see what the business rule would output. So I'm just going to right click one of these expense lines and open record in Explore. Now that it's open in Explore, it's just the glide record query to get to that record specifically. No copying sys IDs or anything silly like that from the last video. If I run this, it's giving me all the best bits of show XML with a few more goodies. So it tells you exactly what type of object you're looking at. It gives you the, what table it is, it's sys ID, it's display value, and the encoded query. And it's also giving you all the elements within that object. So in our case, we're looking at a glide record object, so we're getting the fields from that table. Now I'm gonna pull in that business rule. Business rule, copy it, go to explore, drop it up top. Now you're gonna have to give me a minute here. I need to clean this up a bit so that it runs properly. Okay, so I've cleared out all but one of my GS log statements. I've cleared up some things I already knew were errors, and I pulled out any of the comment sections. I'm also calling the function with this execute rule, and I'm passing it gr, which is my glide record object. The code that I'm most interested in is this section, which basically asks if the expense line has a base expense, you're gonna find out what the source expense type is by dot walking up through either the time card to the task to the expense type or to the base expense time cards tasks expense type. I just noticed that I had my logic reversed, so I just had to reverse that offline a second. Okay, let's run export and see what it gives us. And it gives us a sys ID. That's not what I was expecting. So I'm gonna just comment out this execute rule and I'm gonna get it to output GR again look at that sys ID, I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to run explore again, I'm going to go down to the time card object, and that's not the same sys ID, so I'm really not sure what this is aiming at. I do know that its task and its source ID are the sys ID that explore returned to us, so instead of using dot walking up through time card, I'm just going to take a shortcut and dot walk up through source ID. So I'm going to alter my script here, so I'm not time card dot task, I'm just going to go up through source ID. I'm also going to take out this get value. I think it's confusing things. I'm going to do the same thing here. So instead of walking up through timecard.task, I'm going to walk up through source ID. Instead of get value, that expense type. Well, let's run explore and see what we do. Source expense type is OPEX. Let's double check that. Source expense type, OPEX. So I've altered my script at least three times and I haven't once had to go through the complex iteration of a test plan for this paradigm. So today alone, that saved me at least an hour, and I hope it saves you a ton of time too. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this content, it'd make it so worth my time if you just drop me a like and a share. Also, I've got a massive amount of content on the way, so be sure to subscribe with the little notify option so you're not left behind. Lastly, if you need ServiceNow advice and execution delivered with the same passion and depth of understanding that you just saw, or maybe you're in the PMO and your PMO needs a better CapEx, OpEx control on your projects, see the description below for how to contact me.